Great to have you. Um, you've done all kinds of impressive things. That includes founding a number of successful startups, serving as the president and chief scientist at Kaggle. You founded Fast AI, which is, if, if anyone's not familiar with that, I think pretty well everyone listening to this podcast will be, but it delivers really what I think is the, the single best data science curriculum, sort of machine learning curriculum um, to help with the modeling side that exists. I think on the internet, it's fair to say, uh, I've certainly been recommending it a lot to people. So uh, definitely something to check out. But today, we're actually going to be talking about something else entirely, and that's this report that you put together along with Rachel Thomas uh, that prevents, uh, presents a really rigorous sort of data-driven case for why we should be concerned about COVID-19, the coronavirus pandemic that we're all now experiencing together. Um, what made you decide to write the report in the first place? Well, you know, <clears throat> that report is decades old in COVID-19 years. It's uh, We released it 10 days ago now. And, um, you know, uh, for a few weeks, we've been concerned. And we were concerned because we saw, you know, we're, we're data scientists. And, uh, you know, so we were looking at the data, we saw this, uh, this epidemic that it was coming along out of uh, China, where each person that was infected would infect somewhere between around two and four others, depending on the place. This is that R naught value. This is R naught, yeah. Um, or we can just call it R because R naught's got its own things going on, so we'll just call it R. So, um, and the the death rate varied a lot, you know. Um, sometimes less than 1%, sometimes far more than that. Um, so like we just did some back of the envelope. Well, I don't use envelopes, I use Excel, but that's kind of uncool. So we'll pretend it was an envelope. Um, and thought like, oh, this is, this could be terribly, terribly bad. And at about that time, we saw uh, China basically shut up shop. Yeah. And, you know, China is an interesting country because, I mean, they did some things that, were less than ideal, to say the least, like arresting the whistleblowers who told them about this and censoring any mention of this on social media. Suboptimal. Uh, yeah, suboptimal, but you know, that's kind of, that's their way. Um, but the other thing I'll say about their way is that their, um, their leadership is full of scientists and engineers. And um, when they decide to basically shut down their economy over at a point when there was like what 50 cases or something yeah. <laughs> or you know um, in wuhan we thought okay they they see it too and they will have done a lot more than a quick excel spreadsheet um and then we kind of look and then we thought like okay well what's this going to look like in the us um which you know as a canadian you're lucky enough not to know how incredibly bad our healthcare system is here but it is um you know, it's run for profit, um, there's, which means there's no kind of fat in it. You know, there's no space to look after people in a pandemic. And also, you know, leadership at all levels here is not does not come from the technical population. It largely comes from kind of lawyers and lobbyists and full-time politicians. So we were super worried that um, the response would be too little too late. And the, the, the biggest issue was, um, for, you know, however sick we all are of hearing about exponentials, uh, you know, I, I uh, taught for a number of years at Singularity University, which was basically all about looking at the impact of exponentials. And if there's one thing I know, it's no matter how much you talk about it, no matter how much you hear about it, you yeah. still underestimate exponentials. And, and indeed, Rachel and I even <laughs> underestimated exponentials, you know. So, so we thought, okay, uh, a couple of weeks ago, it's come, you know, it's 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 we got to do something. What are we? What can we do? Well, at least we can inform our local community. So we jotted down some points that we thought our local community needed to know because if we could inform our local community, at least that might help, you know, local schools to close and and you know people to stop getting together in groups and to wash their hands and all that um so we just jotted down some points um and my kind of view is always like okay if you're going to share if you're going to go to the effort of writing something down make it public because then more people can read it if they want to and then we were just like oh my god you know four days later 
half a million people have read this thing and we're just like, oh shit, it turns out people you know, are much more interested in our views about COVID-19 than deep learning because nobody's, we've never had half a million people read a deep learning thing we've written. It's a much more positive kind of virality in that case, yeah. I guess so. Yeah, and you know, we heard from like a lot of doctors and hospitals and stuff saying like, because it was shared a lot through WhatsApp and Nextdoor and Facebook and stuff like that, like, and so we kept on hearing from people saying, you know, oh, like three different people have told me to read this, like doctors would say this, and like, and I, you know, so I finally read it, and then we took it to our hospital leadership, and we decided to, you know, totally reorient our, our clinic, and um, so like we heard from a lot of people who significantly changed the behavior of themselves and their organizations, which is good. Well, and you alluded in your answer to, you mentioned this idea that, you know, we're, we're sick and tired at this point of hearing exponential growth. And it's almost like there's a sense in which this crisis has created a sharp division between people who have some kind of intuition for exponentials and people who don't. What would you say are some of the key ways and the most important ways in which exponential growth has really thrown off a lot of people's intuitions on this one? Well, human intuition doesn't work exponentially. Like we just don't get exponentials uh, intu intuitively. So... The, the 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 big thing for, for me in trying to think about this for for myself and my family is to try to like totally ignore my intuition and just look at the data and then do some scenario analysis. So, um, so it's been interesting to see how how many people have expressed surprise at like what's happening in Italy even now, where else. You know, and like the the I, I was telling my local community a couple of weeks ago, you know, all the schools are going to be closed in a couple of weeks. Yeah, and you better start planning. And like, San Francisco will not be able to keep going as it is because, like, at that point, it was already obvious we were one of the earlier places in the U.S. for cases. And so we started thinking about, you know, we started planning on the assumption that okay, this this city is going to shut down. You know, our daughter won't be able to go to school. Um, but it was it felt it felt wrong. Yeah. You know, but nobody else was doing it, nothing was happening, you couldn't see anything. Um, and so like now is now is not the time to start using our intuition. Now is the time to keep doing that like scenario planning. So what's gonna happen next? 